بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله عدد ما في السماوات والأرض ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به عز وجل ونتوكل عليه ونستهدي ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن نبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونسح الأمة وجاهد في سبيل الله عز وجل وأبدى ربه تعالى حتى أتاه يقين صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله الذين أذهبوا الله عنهم الرجس وتخيرهم تطيرا ورضي عن صحباته الراشدين ورحمة على تابعين لهم بخير وإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأما بعد عباد الله أوصيكم والنفس أولا بتقوى الله عز وجل فيقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول الله عز وجل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين وقال حبيب الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عليكم بتقوى الله والسعى والطاعة Brothers and sisters in Islam First I begin recommending for you as well as myself and giving you the best advice that I can give you today as well as the best thing that I can remind you of today is to have taqwa for Allah have taqwa for Allah as he rightfully deserves and do not die except in a complete state of submission have taqwa for Allah O believers and be with the truthful people O believers, stick to having taqwa for Allah and hear and obey. Stick to having taqwa for Allah, being regardful of Allah and to hear and obey. Dear beloved, Dino Islam is dynamic. Dino Islam is comprehensive. Dino Islam gives direction to humanity on how to behave in, a, in every social context and specifically those who have taqwa for Allah who are regardful adhere to this guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal of our position and our place in any society that we reside. Our duties to that society, the akhlaq or the ethics that we should have in that society, and the adab or the manners that we should have with the people in the broader society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the ayah, that we are all familiar with that's read in interfaith gatherings all the time that has a very deep comprehensive meaning that sometimes we just look at from a surface perspective 
He subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhin nas, inna khalaqanakum min dhakrin wa untha wa ja'umakum shu'uban wa kuba'ila li ta'arrafu. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaqum inna allaha alimun khabir. O people, surely we have created you from a male and a female and have made you into different nations and tribes that you may get to recognize or to know each other. Surely the most honorable of you with Allah are those of you who are most conscious and who are most pious. Surely Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. So it was, it was part of the divine plan, of the divine decree, that Allah Azza wa Jal made the human beings into different nations, that we have different political orientations based upon our environments, that we have, ba that we have different ethnicities, that he made us with different skin colors, different languages. This is part of the divine plan and the divine decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. But these differences that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in, this diversity was not specifically for us to be segregated amongst ourselves, but that we may come to know each other. And as we start off from this one pair, Adam alayhi salam and his spouse, as we start off as one, we should come to recognize each other so that we can become one in our understanding of each other in the plight and the needs of the human family. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made a, upon us as human beings that he gave us diversity, not that we should be surrogate amongst ourselves, but that we should get to know the other nations and the other people so that we can understand our common humanity and our common plight and our common interests as human beings. Rasulullah said in a hadith that's good, that's Hassan, as narrated by Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, El Mu'min, Alafa Mahluf, Wala Khirun Femen, La Yahlaf, Wala Yuhlaf. He sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam said that the believer, well, who is the believer? He is the one that, who becomes acquainted with the custom. And there is no good in whoever does not know the custom, nor is unknown to the people. A believer knows the custom of the people in which he lives in and he's around. And the people are supposed to know the custom and the way of the believer. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, karamullahu wajahu, wa radiyallahu an, he said, an nas a'da'u, Ma jahilu. And nas a'da'u ma jahilu. People, human beings, are enemies to what they're ignorant of. Human beings are enemies to what they lack knowledge of. So we as Muslims if we understand the history of the spread of Islam and how as sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in and the tabi'in rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhim when Islam spread out of the Hijaz and went into greater Syria where the people were not Arab the people of greater Syria were Arabized by the spread of Islam and to North Africa and to East Africa and spread all the way to the borders of China. They understood that they had a part of carrying the message of Dino Islam 
to the people was that they had to know the custom of the people and sit amongst the people. They understood this. The Sahabi, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, went all the way to the borders of China and Islam spread amongst the Chinese people. Sa'ad was not fluent in Chinese and those Chinese people were not fluent in Lughat al-Arabiya yet they accepted Islam how did they accept Islam? what attracted them to Islam? it was the akhlaq and the adab of the Muslimin and by those Muslims being informed interacting with the people learning their culture learning what affected their sensitivities being honest having ethics being clean this is what attracted those people to say la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira dear brothers and sisters in islam as we understand that all of us are creations of Allah all human beings are creations of Allah we should have a, a respect for Allah's creation and we should have a desire to benefit Allah's creation and the best of his creation is the human creation and the best of his human creation is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and he said in a hadith hasan khayrun nas man yanfu'un nas the best of the people is he who benefits the people one of my teachers said something very profound to me when I was a younger man he said Daud Dawood, how can you give da'wah to a people who you don't love? How can we give da'wah? How can we sit amongst people if we don't have love for them? Love for them meaning that we love for them what we love for ourselves. That we have love for them, that we have concern for their success in this life and more importantly for their success in the hereafter the answer to that is we can't truly give concern to people we can't truly give people dawah and once we have a love for those people's condition this is one of the most important ethical teachings of Islam in the hadith of Sahih Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said la yukminu ahadukum hatta None of you truly have faith. You truly are a mu'min. You don't really believe. Unless you love for your brother what you love for your own soul. In this context, the scholars of hadith say that this brother means a brother in humanity, not just a brother in Islam. Your brother in Anas. This is something that's spiritual. This is something that just transcends intellect. Or trying to fake it through rationalization. This is something that is connected in the ruhaniyyah, in the spiritual world, brothers and sisters in Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said in a hadith that's Hassan. Al-Urwah Junudun Mujannada Spirits are troops in an army. The spirits of the human beings are troops in the army. And he continues, فَمَا تَعَرَّفَ مِنْهَا اِخْتَلَفْ وَمَا تَنَاكَرَ مِنْهَا اِخْتَلَفْ Spirits are troops in the army. And whoever recognizes 
Whoever is acquainted, these spirits, they are brought closer together. And those spirits that despise each other, that don't like each other, they are separated. This is why some of the commentators of the Quran say of this ayah of the Quran about lead to arrafu, they translate in the commentary that we as human beings may get to know one another, not despise each other. That we get to know one another, not despise each other. That we have in ourselves a spiritual concern for the other human beings. And when we have this spiritual concern, this spiritual love, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will bring together the arwah and the qulub. He will bring them together. He will unify them. And Minna Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, Karamallahu Wajahu, or Radiallahu An, says in another saying of his, Al Muwaddatun Ta'ataful Kulub fi ihtilafil arwah. He says that love and affection is the mutual conjoining of hearts when the spirits are brought together. Brothers and sisters in Islam, if we want the people who aren't Muslim to have respect for us, if we want the broader people to have love for Dino Islam, if we want to cut down on the Islamophobia, then we have to go outside and interact more with the broader community. And when they see what we're really about, if we have a true love for their condition, if we have a true love for their concern, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I believe in all of my heart and my soul that these people will appreciate and love the Muslims. And this is part of the da'wah, not just talking about Jesus and Islam and passing out pamphlets and having websites. This is a part of da'wah, but this isn't the real da'wah. In conclusion, in a hadith Hassan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, Jubilatu kulubu ala hubbin min asana ilayha. Min asana ilayha. Hearts naturally turn to love whoever does good for them. We mingle amongst the people. We do good for the people. They will naturally have a love and affinity for us. Naturally. Just imagine if you go to your workplace in your neighborhood and someone does a good deed for you regularly. You will appreciate that person. And as a matter of fact, if that person leaves or is missing, that person will be in your mind and in your heart. And you'll want to know what happened to that person, to that brother or sister. Because they did good things for you. This is something within our fitrah as human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala originated us and created us. That if people do good things for us, that it softens our hearts towards those people. <laughs> so if we interact amongst the people, Know what's affecting them. We have the answer and the solutions to their problems. We do good things. Their hearts will naturally soften. For Muslims and Dino Islam. This is really something that is apparent, brothers and sisters. But in fact, seems to be a secret amongst us as a community. It's something that's apparent. It's something we should know. It's a solution to our problems, socially and politically. But somehow or another, it's a secret to most of us because we haven't put this into practice. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase us in love for the people for His sake. May Allah Azza wa Jal guide us towards the true sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah Azza wa Jal makes us to be seen as a people of benefit for the American society. Aqulu kali hada istaghfirullah li wa lakum istaghfirullah li wa lakum.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي ليس كمثله شيء أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا وعظيمنا وشفيئنا محمد الأمين وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المخلصين وتابعين لهم بخير وإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأما بعد عباد الله I come here to you, to you today, with a message from the Council on American and Islamic Relations Michigan chapter that I'm the executive director of. And my khutbah, part of the message of how we counteract some of the anti-Muslim bigotry and Islamophobia that's being fomented against Muslims, especially during this election season, that we have to make more of a conscious effort as individuals and as a community to step outside of our homes, step outside of this Islamic center, and interact and do something for the people. Because as much as CARE as an organization, other organizations, may give an interview in the media, may participate in an interfaith dialogue or discussion at a church. This is only a drop in the bucket of our collective community responsibility of what we have to do to improve the image of Islam in America. Now in saying this, we have to always have professional organized efforts. On March 25th, the Michigan Islamic Academy is having a fundraising banquet at 5 p.m. Our children, our youth, some of them are here right now. And Islamic education is a priority within the Muslim community. Because if we have jahil children, what type of future do we have for Islam in America? So we have to have educated children, just not in reading, writing, and arithmetic, but in usul din, in akhlaq, in adab, according to deen of Islam. But on this same day, March 25th at 5 o'clock, three hours prior, CARE Michigan has its annual fundraising banquet. And as much as the school needs your support, we need your support too. And I'm asking you for two things, and you still can go to the banquet. Do you know that CARE Michigan is representing the Michigan Islamic Academy right now in federal court? Because there are anti-Muslim bigots in Pittsfield Township who are trying to block the school to being moved to that area. So we need advocacy and legal efforts to help protect our civil rights. Brothers and sisters in Islam, freedom is not free. There is a price to pay. And if you don't stand up for your rights, your rights will be taken from you. This is a history of human civilization and this is the history of America. If you do not stand up for your rights, your rights will be taken away from you. Look what's going on in Syria right now. It wasn't always like this in Syria for the Muslimin. So I'm asking you for two things. In the Hadith Hassan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said, At dua salahu mu'min wa imadu deen wa nur samawati wa ard. I want you to make dua. Because the dua is our real weapon. The spiritual weapon is our real weapon. That Allah who is the wajal strengthens care on what we are doing 
and that we may be successful in federal court and defeat those bigots so that our kids can move to a new school location. Kulu Amin. The second thing is, I want you to buy a banquet ticket from me after Sata Jama. Come for a couple of hours, support your community organization. CARE is not Nihad Awad's organization, it's not Daoud's organization, it is your organization. Come and support your organization for a couple of hours and then drive back here and support your school for our children. Because all of these children are our children. I have children at LA Class Training Academy, but the children at Michigan Islamic Academy are my children too. Come to CARE's Banquet, CARE Michigan's Banquet in Dearborn. Stay for a couple of hours. Hear our brother Imam Siraj Wahaj. And then come back here and support the school. This is what I'm asking for you today, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. ثُمْ يَكُلُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يَصَلُونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وصل علينا معهم إنك حميد مجيد وبرك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبرك علينا معهم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين مؤمنات ومسلمين مسلمات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم سو إخواننا في سوريا اللهم سو إخواننا في سوريا اللهم سو إخواننا في سوريا وفلسطين ونيجيريا وكشمير اللهم سو إخواننا في كل مكان برحمتك يا رحم الرحيمين اللهم أصلح أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربي كرب الرزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين